Hello. There are more and more Chinese-made shortwave transceivers on the market. Unfortunately, in terms of workmanship, they are still very much inferior to normal Yesu, ICOM and the like transceivers, and the software is very often very raw for them. But on the other hand, such transceivers are cheap and therefore they are popular among radio amateurs. I continue my story about such transceivers, and this time I will talk about the Zygu X6100 transceiver. The X6100 transceiver is a small-sized shortwave amateur radio transceiver that allows operation on all HF amateur bands and in the 50 MHz band. Moreover, in the receive mode, it operates from 500 kHz to 55 MHz continuously, and for transmission, it also opens up to work in almost the entire range. The transceiver can operate either autonomously from the built-in rechargeable battery or from an external power source. This transceiver looks like a large front panel from a radio, but this is not the front panel, but the entire transceiver. Moreover, it contains a power source and even an antenna tuner. This transceiver has a lot of different features, now in this video I will tell you only about the main ones, and then in the future I will make separate videos about some important complex functions. So, the X6100 transceiver is a transceiver made using SDR technology with one frequency conversion, that is, the transceiver has a local oscillator, a frequency synthesizer and a mixer, the output of which is an almost low frequency signal, that is, a zero intermediate frequency, which is then digitized by an analog to digital converter, and further processing takes place. As you can see, the transceiver has a color screen with a resolution of 800 by 480 pixels. Fairly high resolution. The screen, by the way, is much larger than that of the G90 transceiver. The transceiver is also similar in size and capabilities, but the screen is very small. This transceiver has a much larger screen, it is much more convenient and pleasant to look at it. The maximum span is 100 kHz, that is, plus or minus 50 kHz. The transceiver switches in the settings two modes of the span plus or minus 50 kHz, that is, a width of 100 kHz or a width of 50 kHz, that is, plus or minus 25 kHz from the center frequency. When we tune in frequency using the encoder knob, the main tuning knob, the entire spectrogram and waterfall are shifted, that is, the entire panorama is shifted, and the central working frequency will always be in the center of the screen. There is no mode for the spectrogram to remain motionless, and when the knob of the encoder is rotated, the sight moves, that is, the tuning pointer, in which, by the way, you can see the bandwidth. The voltage of the built-in power supply of the transceiver is 8 volts, that is, it is a two-cell lithium polymer battery. An external power supply can be connected with any voltage from 9 to 15 V as the manufacturer of this transceiver promises us. There is a built-in battery charger that can be turned on and off in the transceiver settings. Unfortunately, as far as I understand, at least in this instance, charging occurs when an external voltage source is connected and when the transceiver is powered on. If you turn off the power, then charging does not occur, at least in this instance, that's how it is. All control of the transceiver takes place with the help of a program that runs inside it under the control of the Linux operating system on the ARM processor. The program, by the way, is written using the Qt library. The screen is not a touchscreen, does not have a touchscreen function, it's just a screen and that's it. The control is carried out by buttons, which are located on the front panel and on the top wall of the radio housing. And of course, the capabilities of the transceiver primarily depend on this very control program, so the capabilities can vary greatly from version to version of the program. For example, in older versions there was no work at all with the Wi-Fi hardware module that this transceiver has. I will now talk about the transceiver in which the version of the programs from January 25, 2022 is installed, a fairly recent program. Hello, hello, hello. Sure. 
Я меня как был старый, по но до этого the body of this transceiver can be positioned in different ways. You can just put it flat on the table like this, you can put it vertically. There are on the back wall, or rather on the side walls, these are the legs that open. You can put the transceiver on these legs, then it will stand at an angle. The most convenient option for working at the table. But not only that, you can use it in the band, for example, 28 MHz or 50 MHz is a large portable radio by connecting some kind of antenna to the BNC type antenna connector. And here, on the top wall of the transceiver case, there is a PTT button, that is, you can press the PTT button directly on the transceiver itself. Here is such a large portable radio. Nothing prevents it from being used in the same mode and, for example, on the 80 meters band, but naturally, you understand what an antenna can be in portable mode on the 80 meters band. The output power of the transmitter of this transceiver in all bands is 5 watts. Programmatically, it is open to work with a power of 10 watts, with an external 12 volts power source connected. Of course, it does not provide 10 watts from the built-in 8 volts source. The transceiver is equipped with a multifunctional microphone with a large number of buttons. There is a direct input of frequency, switching bands and basic operating modes. Absolutely the same microphone as the G90 transceiver. It is connected with a cable with an RJ45 connector to both the transceiver itself and the microphone. Also included with the transceiver is an adapter for mains power, for charging from the mains. The low power adapter is so small, it does not provide the necessary power for the transceiver to transmit. It is only needed to charge the battery and operate the transceiver in receive mode. There is also a wire in order to charge this transceiver or power it from some other power source. It has a wire on one side a connector for connecting a transceiver, on the other side there are just two free ends. And, apparently, this wire is shielded. You can connect it to your own power supply or to a battery in the fields. Also included is a USB Type-C cable for connecting the transceiver to a computer. More on this a little later. There are the following connectors on the transceiver case. A connector for connecting a power source, it is written from 9 to 15 volts. A BNC type connector for connecting an antenna. There is also a 3.5 mm connector on the left side to which the I and QSDR signals of the receiver are output. That is you can connect some external sound card and use your own SDR software. On the other side, there are a lot of connectors on the right side wall of the transceiver case. Here, firstly, an RJ45 connector for connecting a microphone, here a 3.5 mm connector for connecting an external speaker, a 3.5 mm connector for connecting a telegraph key, and another 3.5 mm connector for some accessories. The loudspeaker, by the way, of course, is built in and is located above the knob of the encoder. They are very small in size, they sound quite loud, but very high frequency squeaky. There are also two USB Type-C connectors on the same wall of the side case, one of them in a USB Type-C device for connecting this transceiver to a computer. With this connection to the computer, three devices are formed, two COM ports and a sound card with input and output. And there is also a second USB Type-C connector that works in USB host mode. You can connect a mouse and keyboard to it to control this transceiver. And there is also a slot for connecting a micro SD memory card. The transceiver can save its settings to this memory card, can record sound files that we then play on the air. Not recordings from the air, but sound files, for example, a common call or some other. And also with the help of this SD memory card, the firmware is updated, since the manufacturer gives the image of the card that needs to be written to this card, install it in the transceiver, turn on the power, and then the transceiver will not boot from its own flash memory, but from this card and update firmware. Thank you. 
From an external power source with a voltage of 13.8 volts, the transceiver also consumes a current of about 350 milliamps, plus or minus depending on the brightness of the display, volume, and so on, when the built-in battery is turned off and the Wi-Fi modules are turned off. When the Wi-Fi modules are turned on, the consumption increases by 100 milliamps, and secondly, when the built-in battery is charging, the consumption still increases by a current of the order of 500 to 600 milliamperes, depending on the state of charge of the batteries, since when the battery is charged, the charging current decreases. On the front panel there are five buttons below the display, the functions of which change depending on the operating mode of the program. And to select the functions of these buttons, there are six more buttons to the left of the display above the lower handle. By pressing these buttons, we switch the mode of operation of the lower buttons. We have the main mode, general, when the bottom buttons under the display call up dialogues for radio settings, display modes, and so on. There is a mode of operation when these lower buttons control, for example, digital filters or filters that provide the main bandwidth. In general, all basic transceiver modes are selected using the buttons below the screen, the purpose of which is selected using the buttons to the left of the screen. Here is the way to control. In fact, it is quite convenient, if you get used to it, you can use all this very quickly. Switching everything happens almost instantly, no breaking of the user interface is noticeable. Another of the main controls of the transceiver has two knobs, combined with buttons. These knobs are located to the left of the display. The top one is the volume knob and the same knob controls the RF gain, hardware gain and it controls the squelch. These knob functions are switched by pressing the same knob. When we press it, the function that it regulates changes, and next to this knob on the display, respectively, the level of the set volume or squelch or RF gain is displayed. The lower handle also perform a lot of functions. When we navigate through some menus, settings, that is, if we go to the radio settings menu for an example, we will change the power there or something else. Then using this left knob we select just the parameter that we are changing, and using the right main knob of the volcoder is already changing the value of this parameter. But, which is convenient, when we exit this menu, for example, with saving all settings, we still have the last parameter selected, for example, now it was the transmitter output power parameter, and now this multifunctional lower knob will adjust this selected parameter directly immediately, without going to the menu. That is, we can now adjust the power of the transceiver just on the go. We can go into this section of the settings, select some other parameter, for example, generally select the charger on, off, and exit the menu. Accordingly, this knob will now turn on, off the charger without entering the menu. And so with any other menu item. In the form in which this transceiver is now with the latest firmware downloaded from the official site, it provides 5 watts of power both when powered by the built-in battery and when powered from an external power source. But on the internet there is an alternative version of the control program written using the Qt library for Linux. If this program is installed instead of the main program that was included, then we will have up to 10 watts of power. I repeat once again that the functionality and capabilities of such equipment very much depends on the version of the software and some other software components that are part of this device. And therefore, in your particular instance of the possibility and features of work, the parameters may differ from mine simply because you will have a different version. <laughs> on the musical production process of the opening ceremony of the Beijing Winter Olympics. Next overnight Wednesday we'll have plenty of beef. Olympic Committee officials says the use of artificial snow in Winter Olympics competition to the 
The frequency bands in the transceiver are switched as in most amateur transceivers. There are two up, down buttons with which we switch bands. But in fact, any frequency can be typed from the keyboard, there is a direct frequency input. To switch operating modes, types of modulation, there are three buttons, namely three, not two, since the modes are switched not in a circle, according to the list, but they are switched in groups. There is a group SSB, respectively, for it a separate button, by pressing it we turn on the SSB mode and switch the upper or lower side with the same button. There is an AM and FM mode, one button for it. We press it to turn on the AM mode, press it again to turn on the FM mode and in a circle. And there is a telegraph mode. By pressing this button, we turn on the CW mode. By pressing several times we can switch CW to be normal or in the lower side, that is, reverse. It seems to me that it is much more convenient to switch the mode with three buttons than with two buttons up and down just one long list, as, for example, done with the well-known Yesu FT817 transceiver. And on the top panel, we have six buttons here that control various functions, for example, turn on or off the antenna tuner, turn on or off the preamp and attenuator, switch the VFO, memory mode. By the way, the memory in this transceiver is 200 cells. It's good enough for HF. And here there is a button that switches the setting step. The configuration step may also depend on the version. Much older versions than now had two tuning steps, 10 Hz and 1 kHz. Now this version has a tuning step of three. These are 1 kHz, 100 Hz and 10 Hz. Perhaps then something else will appear in the next firmware. This large portable radio weighs 850 grams, that is, if we consider it as a large portable radio, then it is quite heavy. The capacity of the built-in battery is declared by the manufacturer somewhere on some resources 3.5 ampere hours, and somewhere around 3 ampere hours. I think that you need to expect the worst, keep in mind that the capacity there is about 3 amp hours. In reality, it might even be a little less. When consuming 350 milliamps only in the receive mode, with the Wi-Fi turned off, this supposedly should ensure the transceiver's performance in the region of 10 or 8 to 9 hours. But in reality it turns out a little less. I tried to drive it into the receive mode, apparently it still depends on the brightness of the display, it depends on the volume, it works for several hours, 4, 5, 6 hours, depending again on how many times I pressed PTT. Probably, when the transceiver is operating from the built-in battery, some kind of voltage converter is turned on in it, which does not work when an external source is connected or works in a different mode. And therefore, in the absence of an external voltage source, we see two interference, to the left and right of the center frequency, to the left and right of the display. They have a very high level of this interference, they do not depend on the frequency band, on the operating frequency. That is, if I tune in frequency, these interferences will not shift anywhere. If I switch the frequency band, they also do not change in any way. That is, they are induced somewhere after the mixer, after the frequency converter, directly to the ADC input, or to this mixer itself. Moreover, when connecting the antenna, of course, we get a lot of signals from the air, and against their background the level of interference becomes less noticeable. But in fact, the level of interference remains the same. That is, these two interferences are always present with us even when the antenna is connected. The only thing is that, of course, we do not hear these interferences on the receiver, since the lines never fall into the passband, they are always located to the left and right of the operating frequency. They only prevent us from observing the spectrogram normally, that is, there are always two, left, signals on the spectrogram. Here is such a large portable radio, or a very small self-powered HF transceiver, and even with an antenna tuner, made using SDR technology, running the Linux operating system. While the initial information on this is all, in the future, if something interesting is found in this transceiver, I will do something interesting with it, I will use it somewhere in the fields, then I will tell you about it separately. And for now, that's all. Thanks for watching this video. You work on the air from various transceivers, listen to the air, watch different signals, watch my videos, subscribe to the channel. Alexei Igonen was here, by everyone. Роман 3 центр Федор Ульяна Х5 Иван Ольга. Евграф, добрый вечер, рад вас слышать.